Hello, I'm Derek, uh, our lead FYC council member, and I'm glad you could join us today for this virtual session uh, talking about uh, disability history and awareness. Hi, I'm Christina. I'm Alex. Hi. Hi, I'm Sharina. Hi, my name is Chevy. And today we are recording uh, the Disability History Awareness Session. Having a disability means a lot to many different people. One thing that I think is pretty cool is that we have a chance to show disability pride, which means we are proud of who we are. Today, with that in mind, we want to share our history because in order to be proud, we should have knowledge. We'll be presenting a timeline of what has happened in the disability world. To begin that, we start with Stephen Hawking. In 1776, he, a man with cerebral palsy, signs the Declaration of Independence. He is known for saying, my hands tremble, but my heart does not. In 1782, Edward Allenson, an English surgeon, creates a new way to amputate limbs. In 1784, Valen Hun, known as a father, known as the father and the apostle for the blind. In 1790, Philippe Pinel, a physician, makes the decision to remove chains from the mentally ill. To the right, you should see a painting. This painting represents John Adams signing the act for relief of the sick and disabled seamen in July 1798. In the 1800s, Pinnell, a psychiatrist, developed a way to classify people with mental illness. He now had three ways of doing this. Melancholy, dementia, men mental with psychosis, and that without. In 1801, Jean Mark establishes the principles used today in teaching psych students. He is known for the creation of the film, The Wild Child. In 1805, Dr. Benjamin Rush, considered the father of psychiatry, publishes what's known now as the DSM-5 to diagnose a mental illness. In 1809, Luis Braille is born on J January 4th, and at age three, in a terrible accident, he goes blind. In, in 1870, Thomas Gallivan founded the first permanent school for the deaf in America, making the first effort to educate the disabled. In 1880, the McCoy Asylum opened and became one of the best known mental health facilities in the country. In 19, in 1829, Lewis Braille invented, you know, Braille, and a raised point of alphabet for the boy. In 1844, in the early version of the Ameri American Psychiatric Association, was founded to address issues of people labeled as insane, which later came to be known as mentally ill. In 1860, 
William Little to find a condition of spasticity in the lips of children, which was labeled Little's disease, later renamed cerebral palsy. In 1861 to 1865, the American Civil War resulted in over 30,000 amputees bringing disability issues to the forefront of the American consciousness. And in 1862, uh, a man by the name of Joseph Carey Merrick, better known later in, in his later years as the Elephant Man, is born in England. Uh, Merrick's head and body became covered in large tumors as a result of a rare nervous system disorder, which is now known as neurofibromatosis. And he was eventually diagnosed years with that years after his death. Uh, he earned money appearing in sideshows throughout England and, ex and was experimented on by a lot of doctors and scientists. And then uh, in 1872, Alexander Graham Bell, uh, I'm sure y'all heard of him, the inventor of the telephone that we still use today, um, he opened a speech school for, the, for deaf teachers in Boston. Um, he, he believed uh, that deaf children should be educated orally and in uh, day school situations. Uh, 1881, uh, Sigmund Freud, uh, uh, after researching the uh, central nervous system, got his medical degree. Um, and in 1887, Helen Keller, y'all heard of her, uh, she was deaf and blind, uh, meets her tutor, uh, gets her new tutor um, to help her with her studies. And um, in 1907, eugenic steriliza sterilization law spreads like wildfire. Um, Indiana becomes the first state to an enact such a law uh, for confirmed what was back then uh, known as confirmed idiots and rapists. Um, and the law spread because it was enacted in 24 other states. Then we get to 1917, uh, uh, during World War One. at the end of it, uh, after being locked in an explosion and diagnosed with shell shock, um, Wilford Owen arrives at Craig Lockhart Hospital in Scotland. There he meets a poet and a soldier, Siegfried Sasson, who later introduced him to Robert Graves. Literary works from these three men, often touching on the subject of men disabled in battle, from the literacy historical record for all the countries involved in the Great War. Are they formed those? Um, and then 1918, uh, this was very uh, important uh, as a result of all the large number of World War I veterans returning with disabilities, Congress passes the first major rehabilitation program for soldiers. In 1920, these, a bill funding vocational rehabilitation guarantees federal money for job counseling and training for disabled people and the general public. Now, Vocational rehabilitation, yes, that's the exact same thing we still have today um, that helps people with disabilities find jobs and uh, suitable work. Um, and then in 1919, uh, the Easter Sales uh, organization was found, which also does a lot of charitable work for helping uh, people with disabilities in the community. Um, In 1925, Florida Kello is injured in a bus accident. She's one of the most famous, influential artists of the 20th century. 
also in 1925, Samuel Orton began his extensive study of dyslexia. Hi. Now it could be a neurological versus visual in that it was likely connected to left hand handiness. His first assumption is right, his second one not so. In 1927, the Supreme Court rules in Buck versus Bell that the sterilization of mental defectors such as K. S. Buck, a young woman in Virginia, is constitution under careful state guard. Perhaps unbelievably, this ruling has never been overturned. In his opinion, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes right, is better for all the world if instead of waiting to execute, to generate offspring for crime or to let them start for the embassy. Society can prevent those who are manifestly unfit from continuing the time. Three generations of imbeciles are enough. Okay, so when we fast forward to later in 1927, um, the Iron Lung to Combat Polio was designed. In 1927, Philip Drinker and Lewis Shaw developed the Iron Lung, a chamber that provides artificial respiration for uh, polio uh, patients being treated for respiratory uh, muscle paralysis. So if you fast forward to 1930, uh, 1932, Franklin D. Roosevelt becomes the 32nd president of the United States. And upon his reelection for an unprecedented four terms before dying in office in April 1945, in August of, of 1921, while vacationing in Campe uh, Camp Campo Bello Island in New Brunswick, um, Roosevelt contracted an illness believed to be polio, which is a result in total and permanent paralysis from the waist down. After becoming president, he helps found the new foundation of infant, uh, infantile paralysis known as the March of Dimes, which is leadership in this organization is the one that he is the reason he is commemorated by, uh, by the dimes. So in 1934, California Council of the Blind was here. At age 23, Jacobus Tenbrook, blind since age 14, joins with Dr. Newell Perry and others to form the California Council of the Blind, which later becomes the National Federation of the Blind of California, a model of a nationwide organization which forms six years later. Then in 1935, during FDR's administration, he signed the Social Securities Act. President Roosevelt signs the Social Securities Act, establishing a program of permanent assistance to adults with disabilities. Now, if you go fast forward to 1935, uh, disability protest results in WPA jobs. Now, in this protest, the fact that their requests of employment with work progress of administrations, which is WPA, have been stamped PH, which is physically handicapped, 300 members of the League of Physically Handicapped stage a nine-day sit in the home of Relief Bureau of New York City. Eventually, they helped secure several thousand uh, jobs nationwide which is the League of Physically Handicapped is accepted as the first organization of people with disabilities by people with disabilities. 1937. Now, you guys probably know who this is, one of the most famous musicians to ever play on earth, Ray Charles. At the age of seven, Ray Charles Robinson loses his sight completely due to glaucoma, which he has since the time of his birth in Albany, Georgia. He learns how to read music and Bri and Briley, um, and eventually drops his last name while performing on the Florida bus, uh, I'm sorry, Florida Blues Circuit. You probably remember one of his most famous songs was Georgia's On My Mind. In 1939, the Nazi program kills thousands. During the height of World War II, Adolf Hitler orders widespread mercy killing of sick and disabled. 
codename Actian T4, which is the Nazi in, um, in uh, I forgot the name, which is a, a Nazi in uh, new, how can I say it? Uh, it was a Nazi program which is suited um, to eliminate life unworthy of life. Between 75,000 to 250,000 people were intellectually or physically disabled are systematically killed from 1939 to 1941. Now, one of the most famous baseball players to ever played, Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig Day, which is celebrated on July 4th, 1939. Um, Lou Gehrig Day is held at Yankee Stadium in New York City which is the first baseman also known as the Iron Horse, has been diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as ALS. By the day tells the world, today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. His statement resounds long after his death in 1941. Serena, you're muted. Sorry about that. Okay, let's try that one more time. All right. In 1941, John F. Kennedy's 23-year-old sister, Rosemary, undergoes a prefrontal lobotomy, which was supposed to be a cure for the lifelong retardation that she experienced. The operation failed and she was systematically killed. But the good that came out of this situation is this was the beginning of creating the Special Olympics in honor of their sister. In 1948, Dr. Howard Rush creates the beginning for rehabilitation medicine. In 1950, disabled veterans and people with disabilities begin the barrier-free movement. Par parents of youth that were diagnosed with mental retardation found the Association of Retardation Citizens, also known as ARC, they made art to try and educate people in the world that didn't understand what mental retardation meant. Today, we refer to those they referred to as mentally retarded as people with Down syndrome. Moving on. To 1953, during that time, Samet Brenda, a clinical director at the Ferdinand School in Massachusetts for boys with mental retardation, invites 100 teenage students to participate in a science club in which they will be privy to special outings and extra snack. In, this, in a letter requesting parental consent, Brenda mentions an experiment in which blood samples are taken after a special breakfast meal containing certain amounts of calcium, but makes no mention of the inclusion of radioactive substances that led to, that they fed to the boys in their oatmeal. In 1957, actor Billy Barty makes a national appeal to the little people of America to converge on Reno, Nevada. 20 answered the call, creating the Midgets of America organization, later renamed the Little People of America. In 1960, the first accessible stat standard was published. 
Also in 1961, Stevie Wonder discovered, Stevie Wonder was discovered. He was discovered at the age of 11 and he arranges, he was arranged to have an audition and then signed to Motown. In 1962, Ed Roberts fights for admission to the university. Ed Roberts was a young man with polio and he enrolled at the University of California. After his admission was rejected, he fights to get that, to get that decision overturned. In 1963, 1963, federal funding was set aside for Disability support. In 1964, the Civil Rights Act was passed without including people with disabilities. In 1965, Title 19 of the Social Security Act created Medicaid, which we all know about. Eugene Kennedy Shriver founded the Special Olympics for people with intellectual disabilities. The first international Olymp Special Olympics was held in six Chicago of 1968. Also in 1968, the Arch Architectural Barriers Act of 1968 was required on the buildings built with federal funds to be made physically accessible. In 1970, Judy Human, a disabled teacher, sued her school district because she was denied her teaching license due to her wheelchair being controlled considered a fire ass. In 1972, George Wallace, Wallace, governor of Alabama, was shot and paralyzed. The, the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 made it illegal for public institutions to discriminate based on disabilities. And uh, in 1974, uh, the last of what was known as the ugly laws were repealed. These laws uh, were laws that allowed police just to arrest people just for appearing to be disabled in public, disabled in public, uh, or demonstrating some kind of disability. Um, in uh, 1975, the Education for Handicapped Children Act was passed. Uh, it's now called the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. You might be familiar with that. Uh, or idea for short, it was signed into law and it guarantees a free and appropriate uh, education to all children with disabilities in a least restrictive environment. Um, and uh, also in 75, uh, after a five year battle with parents and advocates, New York Governor Hugh Carey signs the Wilthrow Brook consent order closing down a state institution notorious for its horrible conditions. Um, 
and uh, in 1976, uh, a deaf actress, uh, Linda Bowes, uh, a graduate of Gallaudet College and a veteran of the National Theater for the Deaf, signs a long-term contract to play Linda, the librarian, on television Sesame Street. I'm sure y'all all heard of Sesame Street. Uh, and she was alongside James Earl Jones, a, another well-known actor who has a speech-related disability, also got his start on that show. And in 1977, y'all might have heard of this already, but uh, demonstrators led by Judy Human take over the Health, Education, and Welfare Office in the uh, federal building in San Francisco, California in protest of Hugh's secretary refusal to complete uh, regulations for Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 73, which make it illegal for federal agencies, public universities, and other public institutions receiving federal funds to di discriminate against anyone based on the basis of disability. After 25 days, the, uh, uh, the Secretary re uh, relents and signs the regulations into effect, making this takeover event the longest occupation uh, of a federal office by protesters in U.S. history. And then in 1978, uh, in Denver, Colorado, 19 members of the Atlantis Community Block buses with, with their wheelchairs chatting, we will ride uh, to demonstrate against the inaccessibility of public transportation. And also in 78, the Organization for Hispanic Children with Disabilities was founded. And then finally, after that, in 78 also, the National Council on Disability was established, uh, board was established uh, within the Department of Education. Its purpose was to promote, is to promote policies, programs, practices, and procedures that guarantee equal opportunity for all people with disabilities, regardless of the nature of their disability. And uh, then in 1980, institutions, uh, the civil rights of Institutionalized Persons Act gives the Department of Justice power to sue state or local institutions that violates the rights of people held against their will, including those residing for care or treatment of mental illness. Uh, and then also in uh, 1980, uh, the uh, a formal diagnosis was started to be uh, established for uh, attention deficit disorder. In, 19, 20, in 1982, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the World Program of Action Concerning the Disabled. In, in 1982, to encourage full participation and equality for people with disabilities around the world. Allen A. funds the National Organization for Disability in 1982. The mission is to expand the participation and contribution of Americans with disabilities in all aspects of life and to close the participation gap by raising disability awareness through programs and information. As president of NAR, he built the coalition of disability groups that successfully fight for the inclusion of a statue of President Franklin D. Roosevelt in his wheelchair. Yeah. He is an international leader in the disability community, which was started in 2005. In 1983, Americans with disabilities for accessible public transportation, now known as a DAC, begins its national campaign for less on buses and access to public transportation for people with disabilities. For seven years, ADAPT, under the leadership of Bob, Stephanie, Thomas, and Mike, blocked buses in cities across the U.S. to demonstrate the need for access to public transit. After the passage of the ADA, and that began to focus on attendant and community-based services 
becoming American disabled for a tenant program today. In 1986, the American, I mean, the Air Carriers Access Act is implemented, which prohibits discrimination by domestic employed air carriers against qualified individuals with physical and mental disability. It applies only to air carriers that provide regularly scheduled services for hire to the public. Requirements include boarding assistance and certain accessibility features in newly built aircraft and new or altered airport facilities. So in 1988, Gallaudet's death president now protests. So students of faculty and the community of Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C. organized a week-long protest on a campus demanding the selection of a deaf president for the university. The protest is called Deaf President Now, or as Dr. I. King Jordan is named. Mandated accessible housing and new projects. The Fair Housing Amendments Act of 1988 expands on the Civil Rights Act of 1968 to require that a certain number of accessible housing units that be created in, in an all new multifamily housing. The act covers both public and private homes and not only those in recipient of federal funding. Disabled writer Burns book in protests. Paul Longmore Noted disability historian burns a copy of his book in front of the federal building in Los Angeles in protests of work dissentives, which stopped him from receiving payment as an author to keep his medical benefits. An assistant technology initiative. Technology related assistance for individuals with disabilities act of 1988 is passed. This piece of legislation increases access to the availability of and funding for an assistant technology through state and national initiatives. McAfee chooses life and becomes an advocate. Larry McAfee is granted the right by a Georgian, by a Georgia court to be given a sedative and be taken off a ventilator in order to end his life. He changes his mind and becomes a disability rights advocate. Now, if you fast forward to 1990, this is one of the most important things that happened in a disability community. The Americans with Disabilities Act becomes law. The Americans with Disabilities Act, also known as the ADA, is signed into law by then President George H.W. Bush, alongside the founding father, Justin Dart. The ADA is considered the most important civil rights law since Title 504 and has cross-disability support, bringing disability-specific organizations, advocates, and supporters all together for the same cause. Terry Schiavo severes, su um, suffers severe brain damage. Now, Terry Schiavo is severely brain damaged after her heart stops because of a chemical imbalance that is believed to have been brought on by an eating disorder. Court-appointed doctors ruled she is in persistent vegetative state with no real consciousness or chance of recovery. Over a decade later, her case will spark much controversy and receive national media attention. In 1992, California hosts its first Youth Leadership Forum. The first Youth Leadership Forum for Youth with Disabilities is developed by California by Governor's Committee for Employment of Disabled Persons. The U.S. Department of Labor funds other states to develop similar forums, and by 2007, Youth Leadership Forums are taking place in 23 states, as well as ours truly. American Association of People with Disabilities. Now, Paul Hearn, a longtime leader in disability community, achieves his dream of creating a national association to get people with disabilities more consumer power and a stronger public voice with the creation of the American Association with People with Disabilities. In 
1995, Christopher Reeve, an actor known for playing Superman, was paralyzed due to falling from a horse and became an advocate for people seeking cures for spinal injuries. The Telecommunication Act of 1996 required that devices be made accessible. In 1998, the Supreme Court ruled that the ADA benefits must be given to people with HIV. In 1999, a district or judge ruled that a nine-year-old with CP must be able to be allowed to play soccer in his squad. In 1999, the Ticket to Work Act allowed Medicare and Medicaid beneficiaries to hold paying jobs without losing medical benefits. <laughs> In 2004, the first disability Pride Parade was organized to change the way people think and define disability. Over 2,000 people attended. Can you believe it? I forgot earlier today to say euthanasia when we we're discussing the Nazi program. Um, so fast forward to 2005, or actually we're going to start with 2004, uh, Tennessee sued in inaccessible courts. In 2004, the United States Supreme Court hears Tennessee versus Lane, a case which individuals sued the state of Tennessee for failing to ensure the courthouses of accessible to people with disabilities. One plaintiff is arrested when he refuses to crawl or be carried upstairs. The state argues that they can not be sued under Title II of the ADA. The Supreme Court decides in favor of people with disabilities. However, ruling the Tennessee can be, uh, can be sued for damages under Title II for failing to provide any access to the courts. Funding of, for Youth Information Centers. In 2005, the administ uh, administration for developmental disabilities begins to fund a youth information centers known as y YICs. Model after a parent training in information centers, YICs are designed to be run by and for youth and emerging leaders with disabilities like the Florida Youth Council themselves, promoting the youth-led agenda and providing services within the disability community. In 2005, uh, there have been cuts in Tennessee for Medicaid lease to sit in. Upset by Governor uh, Bre Bredesen's massive cuts to the state Medicare system, 10, 10 care, disability advocates in Tennessee begin a sit in in the governor's office for the last, for, for that lasted 75 days, replacing the record set in 1977 by the Hugh office takeover. Shivo's husband has right to let her die. Terry Shivo's husband, Michael, is given the right to remove her from a feeding tube. Terry dies at the age of 41 after living 15 years in the persistent vegetative state. Despite numerous protests by her parents, she dies from dehydration after the feeding tube is removed by court order. The case gains national attention and continues to direct public focus on living wills and other forms of life slash estate planning. 
Shiva left no written instructions concerning her wishes if she were to ever become so severely disabled. And now Derek's going to share with us a little bit about something that we've helped happen in disability history. Yes. So um, we, we kind of went through, just went through a little timeline of uh, the history of our nation when it comes to disability history and awareness. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of things, but kind of bringing it back home for us. Uh, there's been some things that took place right here in Florida. Um, that our council, uh, our Florida Youth Council uh, has been a part of. Uh, one thing being, uh, we actually got a bill passed back in 2008 um, that uh, created, that established the first two weeks in October every year as Disability History and Awareness Weeks in the state. Now, uh, this, the purpose of the bill was, uh, that was the purpose of it. and um it stated each public school shall provide instruction on some disability history and awareness during that time um sadly it doesn't say they should it just says they can but um the positive outcomes was it was better uh had better treatment for people uh people with disabilities in society, especially for youth in schools, increased attention to preventing bullying and harassment, uh, self-esteem, um, and basically, uh, why, why was this important to us? Because the, according to the census, um, basically one in five people uh, in this country are disabled, so it, if you're not disabled, there's a high chance you know um, of someone who is, and are affected by that as well. Um, so we got that passed and um, it was signed by Governor Charlie Crist back in 2008. Um, I believe at possibly our family cafe event that year. Um, I know we had some disability related bill signed one year. Um, I believe that was definitely it. Um, so um, uh, We'd worked with our lawmakers that year and got it passed. And um, we encourage you to be your best advocate uh, as a person with disability. It's uh, really up to us to be in everybody else's faces, telling them what needs to be done and what uh, we need uh, so we can be a regular functioning member of society, just like everybody else who doesn't have a disability. Um, so, um, much it. Uh, does anybody else want to add anything uh, related to our bill that we had passed? I guess we'll take that as a no. So. Hopefully we can actually do more than just one week. We can try to pass it for a month uh, to celebrate disability history awareness for one month. Yeah, that would be that would be wonderful, and uh, or at least to get more promotion of it in the two weeks that are established. Because in my opinion, it does not get enough publicity. Uh, my personal opinion, it's overshadowed by another cause that is all month long. That makes sense. Okay, so as we wrap up our disability history, just want to let you all know that disability history is not only for uh, people with disabilities. We share these things so that we can also educate others and we can see the fails and the successes um, of, of our disability world. So as you go out today, hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you'll share it with a friend. Otherwise, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach us reach out to us on any of our social media. Uh, we are under the Florida Youth Council. Yeah, check out our Facebook page, Twitter page, uh, our website, floridayouthcouncil.com. And if you have any further questions, you can contact our youth advisor who works in the Family Cafe office. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this uh, 
virtual session at the 2020 Family Cafe Conference. Uh, and um, we hope to see you back in person next year. Thank you. Bye, everyone.